Just an FYI, this is going to be the only video today. I've got something to take care of this afternoon. Not going to have enough time to get another video uploaded. Going to be back to the regular schedule tomorrow, though. But okay. Let's get into this. Ladies and birthing persons, Behind the Line proudly presents to you another exciting edition of The Woke, turning on The Woke. <laughs> you know, I wish we had started numbering these special episodes. This feels like, I don't know, it feels like at least the 20th time this year where the wanker spankers target one of their own and go from pleasure spanking to punishment spanking. Now, I am sure most of you guys don't remember Jerry Sullivan. You would have no reason to remember him. He's just another irrelevant bum in the media. I would not even classify him as being part of the mainstream media. Jerry Sullivan, he has spent most of his career working for local outlets in upstate New York. The only reason I recognized his name this morning in the headlines, I did a video on him around the same time last year. Let me show you the type of journalist Jerry Sullivan is. I struggle to even call him a journalist. Jerry Sullivan is one of those untalented writers who tries to poke professional athletes. He tries to bait players into an exchange just so he can bring attention onto himself because he can't get attention or recognition based on his talent alone. Last year, the Bills lost to the Patriots on Monday Night Football in a game where Mac Jones only threw three passes. Bills defense held New England to 14 points. Now, in the modern NFL, your defense holds your opponent to 14 points, you expect to win that game. The Bills lost. After the game, a couple of the Bills players, they addressed the media. Listen to this asinine question that Jerry Sullivan asked. Roll the film. It's been over 40 years since the team has won a game running a few times in the game, passing a few times. Is that embarrassing? I mean, what kind Boy, of question? Boy, what are we doing, bro? What kind of question is that? It's a question. I mean, the nation's going to be criticizing you about calling you so right. I'm asking I mean, that I mean, keep that, keep that, keep that points. You see what I'm talking about here? Are you embarrassed by your performance? Um, embarrassed by what? We held them to 14 points. What the hell do you want us to do? Not our fault Josh Allen shit the bed. Now, that's just an example of the type of journalism Jerry Sullivan produces. On Twitter, he describes himself as a liberal Democrat. Now, I used to describe myself as liberal, and I still am liberal in some aspects, but I would never, ever describe myself as a liberal Democrat today. Liberal Democrat translated from woke to English means pow my brown. Jerry Sullivan. He also describes himself as a women's sports advocate, meaning he enjoys lathering up the hands in lotion while watching professional dump divers pretend to play basketball in the WNBA. His Twitter handle is by Jerry Sullivan, which is fitting because deacons at Woke United Methodist, they waved bye to Jerry Sullivan after kicking his ass out of church yesterday afternoon. Monday night, Jerry Sullivan was a guest on something called the Trainwreck Podcast. Never has a podcast had a more appropriate name. This podcast, literally a train wreck. It appears to be filmed in a double wide trailer. One of the hosts appears to be a fan of the pretend, a fan of the make believe. He is proudly holding a fake wrestling championship belt. Kind of like the Las Vegas Aces a couple of months ago holding up the championship trophy of fake basketball. I know wrestling fans don't like to hear this, but those dudes that you see on TV, they're not real champions. It's all pretend, make-believe. Wrestling is meant for kids, not grown men. But anyway, during the filming of this train wreck, one of the hosts interrupted the conversation with exciting news. Oh my God, we have three people on our live stream. We have just broken our previous viewership record of two views, but I don't understand. The comments are overwhelmingly negative. This one from a confirmed woman named Amy is something I have heard from women all my life. Amy says she is turned off by the flamboyant virginity on this podcast. Now, I am not sure what the conversation was about leading up to this clip. I am assuming they were talking about women who like sports. Jerry Solomon, someone who calls himself an advocate for women in sports, 
had some very interesting remarks about women in sports. I'm going to try to share this clip. I might have to black out the video for copyright reasons, but listen for yourself. In the floor, we had three people that have commented on the live stream. Uh, if this is Amy, I thought the aim was to get views, not turn people away. Uh, the next you know, comment, hey, women, be better than this, because the worst fans really are the women. They, they, don't, they don't get critical journalism. They're just, they all, they all want to be cheerleaders. Okay. Be, you know what I mean? It's always, I don't want to, I yeah, know yeah. it's a dangerous avenue to go down to criticize women in general because they're better than men generally. But as, Agre as fans, now, now we need to frame what you just fans, said. They don't, generally they don't get it as fans. Best the truth finally comes out. We finally get to hear what shit fucks really think about women in sports. The mainstream media has relentlessly tried to convince you that pretend basketball is better than men's basketball. Of course, no one believes that bullshit. First of all, Jerry Sullivan is wrong. Female fans are not the worst fans in sports. Apparently, Jerry Sullivan has never dealt with fans of the Dallas Cowboys or Alabama. My God, Alabama by far, most annoying fans in sports. Most Alabama fans view their fandom as some sort of birthright. I was born with crimson in my blood. Uh, yeah, so was everyone else. There are some women who know more about their teams than the men do. There are times when my girlfriend gets into the Pelicans more than I do. Now, she doesn't know as much about the history of the franchise than I do. I've been following the team for 20 years. She's only been following them since we've been dating. But she can tell you every single player on the roster. She doesn't need the announcers telling her who's on the floor. She knows all the players. Yesterday morning, she's telling me her Jones is returning last night from injury before I even knew about it. Now, Jerry Sullivan is catching shit because he generalized all women as being the worst. What he should have said was female journalist or analyst in sports media are the worst. That would have been a more factual statement. Now, I'm not generalizing. Not all women, of course, are that bad. There are some great women covering sports. Doris Burke, Linda Cohn, Aaron Andrews, Pam Oliver. Michelle Tafoya was excellent when she was on Sunday Night Football. But there's also a lot of women in sports media who were given their roles based on how many woke boxes they check instead of their lack of qualifications. We just talked about this yesterday with Sarah Spain. Sarah Spain is not qualified to cover professional cornhole. She got her start in media by auctioning herself off as a Super Bowl date. Now, the only reason she was noticed is because the highest bid was one shovel. Even garden tools, who can find good use for just about anything, even garden tools realize Sarah Spain is completely useless. Don't even get me started on pretend NFL analyst Mina Kimes. <sighs> Mina Kimes was given her role at ESPN because she wrote a heartfelt letter about how her and her dad bonded over the Seattle Seahawks. Oh, what a nice story. Millions of dudes, they bond with their dads every Sunday talking on the phone about the weather. Does that make them meteorologists? Every day on our walks, our dog forms a bond with the freshest turd pile. Does that make Chu a professional WNBA dump diver? No and no. It's great that Mina Kimes bonded with her father over the NFL. That doesn't mean she's qualified to analyze the league. I don't take stock advice from the penny traders sitting in Starbucks, and I don't listen to NFL analysis from someone wearing stilettos. Malika Andrews, L. Duncan, Jamel Hill. Hell, at one point, Tipper the Bongo Sniffer was pretending to be a sports expert. And I can't forget the woman who perfectly exploited her race and gender for her position in sports media. Maria Taylor. The same Maria Taylor who forgot Anthony Davis played in the NBA. This woman was so talented. ESPN had her covering low-level college football for years. All of a sudden, ESPN becomes infected with the woke fungus. Maria Taylor is elevated covering the NBA Finals. She's given a vote for NBA Player Awards. She is casting votes in a league she knows absolutely nothing about. 
She destroyed the career of Rachel Nichols, so NBC would pay her millions of dollars to be the worst host in the history of Sunday Night Football. And you know what? The media celebrated her for it. Now, these are just a few examples of women in sports media. You want me to keep going? Dominique Foxworth, Katie Nolan, Michelle Beadle, Carrie Champion, Shay Shay Sharp. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Shay. I can't put Shannon Sharp on the same level as someone like Sarah Spain. Well, KC, you also said Dominique Foxworth. He is a man, not a woman. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Has that been confirmed by a biologist? The only thing confirmed about Dominique Foxworth is his status as a grade-A shitfuck. There is one thing with this whole Jerry Sullivan controversy that bothered me, and it had nothing to do with what he said. I don't agree with his comments, but I am rarely, if ever, bothered by words, especially when those words are coming from a fuck knuckle. Jerry Sullivan is an independent journalist. He was a contributor for the Niagara Gazette, local affiliate WIVB-TV in upstate New York, and something called the Lockport Union Sun and Journal. None of these are what I would call esteemed jobs, but it will still work. Kept the lights on. All three of these media outlets fired Jerry Sullivan yesterday. All three of them. Not one had the balls to withstand the backlash. This story would have blown over in 48 hours. By tomorrow afternoon, these comments from Jerry Sullivan, they would have been forgotten. Now, was he wrong in what he said? Sure. Did he deserve to be fired three times in the same day? No. But KC, these companies have the right not to associate themselves with a misogynist. That is true. That is true. But the guy made a mistake. He made one mistake. He expressed how he felt. When are we going to stop penalizing people for expressing their thoughts? Now, you don't have to agree with Jerry Sullivan, but that doesn't mean he should be fired for what he thinks or believes. All it takes is one mistake, and they want to eliminate your entire career. I looked up some of his articles. Jerry Sullivan does highlight female athletes. Just last month, he wrote a piece on a female soccer goalie playing at the University of Buffalo. Now, outside of her friends and family, how many people cared? Probably none. Jerry Sullivan, he highlighted her anyway, knowing that it was not going to get the same traffic as articles that he writes on Josh Allen and the Bills. Now, look, I'm not trying to defend the guy, but he didn't deserve to lose three jobs in one day because he spoke his mind. You should be able to express your mind without consequence. Well, within reason, of course, but these companies are so afraid of the backlash from a handful of wanker spankers. None of them will stand up to them. Give me your thoughts. Jerry Sullivan claims women worst fans in sports. Do you agree with him? Should he have been fired over his remarks? Let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.